Alan, thanks for joining us at European Sustainable Energy Week. My first question has to be, what's the CEO of a water organization doing at an energy policy event? Uh, well, Ross, I mean, the easy answer is it's all connected, but we actually need to think a bit harder about how it's connected. So uh, when I got the invitation to speak here, I jumped at it. Uh, water and energy are really two sides of the same challenge. So on the one hand, we need to have the energy transition, sustainable energy transition, if we're going to draw down carbon emissions and reduce global <laughs> climate change, global warming, because global warming is in turn causing water scarcity. Uh, climate change is causing increasing droughts, increasing floods. Uh, and these problems, of course, uh, are, are deeply intertwined. So being able to make that link between the imperative to drive the energy transition, but the reality of needing to work with water, uh, both on the impact side and on the cost side, because we also have to save water in order to drive the energy transition. Driving the energy transition requires water for production purposes, for example. It's all deeply connected. I really enjoyed the session you were in yesterday, which spoke about this uh, intergenerational collaboration but one of the things that came out is, you know, that skills gap that the energy sector is experiencing. You know, if we're going to drive this energy transition forward, that new generation needs a whole new set of skills. How do, how do, we, how do we get them there? Yeah, well, I mean, an event like this is a great step forward because it, it's bringing young people together, showing them that they really do have influence and opportunity. Uh, because these, these are career choices that they're making. I, I, I talk to them, and these things are also two sides of the same coin. In the water sector, you could practically swap out a lot of the language being used here and just put water where you're, when we're saying energy. And the issues are the same. Uh, the skills, for example, that need to be uh, uh, developed and the opportunities. I talked to the head of one of our country water partnerships, for example, who started working with youth not because it was a fluffy thing to do, but because it was strategically deeply important for them. They needed to make sure that young, smart, capable people were attracted into these professions because we need to take care of, for example, the higher risk of flooding or the other kinds of things that we have to, water management issues. Similarly, we have to attract good young people to take care of the energy transition. So, how do we do that? By making it attractive to them, by showing that this is a, a career path with promise, showing that this is the future, showing that this is a need, showing that you will be able to not just work with energy. If you're working with energy, you'll find yourself working with water. You'll find yourself working with economic development, with adapting to climate change, with new investment processes. Now, all of these things, you know, when we say energy or we say water, what we're really saying is changing the world. It's an interesting one. So change is the key word here, and policy conferences are notoriously good at talking a lot, but it's about action, right? So if I gave you a magic wand tomorrow and said, well, implement a change to you know, speed this forward, what would you do? Well, I mean, if I had a real magic wand, then you know, uh, leaders in key political uh, positions would fo refocus tremendous amounts of resources on Intergen well, intergenerational, but also interdisciplinary teams uh, looking at how to accelerate in an integrated fashion the transitions that we're talking about to make sure that as we plan our energy transition, we're also thinking about the water impacts and needs. And as we similarly, as we work on water, we're doing the opposite. As we think about adapting ourselves for a warmer world and being more resilient, that we're doing that in a way that considers the needs of future generations, considers career opportunities, considers economic development in a new light. So this is happening. It's happening at conferences like this. It's happening in academia. It's happening in corporate boardrooms and innovation centers. But it's happening in a kind of an ad hoc fashion around the planet. Uh, so with a magic wand, I'd say, wow, let's all get laser focused on this incredibly huge task that humanity is facing. But, uh, you know, if I get even just a tiny little magic wand, I'll just say, let's just do more of that. Okay. It was interesting when we were speaking earlier, you spoke about innovation's not just about tech. It's about finance and many other things. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we need to accelerate not just, when we say innovation, I think we get a little sloppy. Most people think technology and here comes AI or new solar panels. Innovation is a process of accelerating our adoption of the new things we already know how to do and, and, and deploying them. So yes, we're inventing stuff in the lab, but then we have to really accelerate our adoption of those new things. And that takes economics. 
That takes innovative social processes, uh, policy processes, dialogue processes, bringing people together in different ways. We could, for example, we're talking about this in the water sector. How do you use AI to develop more quickly, very robust data-based scenarios? So either we could do A, B, or C, or D, right? Uh, it takes time to develop those. If we develop them faster, we can have good dialogues about Okay, well, we should do B, and we should do it mixed with, <laughs> with D, because the analysis that the AI is showing us means that if we do that, we'll get these other benefits. You know, we can really accelerate these processes if we're just a little creative. Alan, that's fascinating. Thanks very much for your time and your insights. Well, thanks for asking, Ross. Pleasure to talk with you. For more insights, be sure to join the Inlet community.